Patek Philippe is the last independent family-owned Genevan watch manufacturer. Its name is composed of the names of the two founders, Antoine Norbert de Patek and Adrien Philippe. And this is their story. Patek is born in June 1812 in Piaski, a small town in eastern Poland. He is christened Antony Patek. In 1828, just before his 16th birthday, he enlists with the Polish cavalry. He is assigned to the 1st Mounted Rifles Regiment in Warsaw. On January the 25th, 1831, the same deposes Nicholas I and declares Poland's independence. Patek is promoted to sub-lieutenant of the cavalry brigade. Patek is one of more than 10,000 insurgents and many patriots who choose exile. It is the great emigration towards the West, especially into France. Fleeing through the German states, the Polish exiles are supported by refugee committees. In 1832, Patek is in charge of one of these committees in Bamberg. Patek follows the exodus into France. He takes up residence in Cahors and later in Amiens, where he works as a typographer. Quite likely, he lives in Paris as well. In 1833, Patek travels to Switzerland. He officially registers in Versoire in 1835. In 1839, Patek establishes the Patek Chapek manufacture on Quai de Berg 15 at a three-person partnership limited in duration to six years. Also in 1839, Patek weds the niece of Moreau. He is naturalized in Geneva and becomes a citizen of Versoire in 1843. Philippe is born on April the 16th, 1815, in La Bazoche Gouet, in the department Eure et Loire. He notes, a town with 2,400 souls, of whom at least half live in the countryside within a radius of an hour on foot. The father, Monsieur Philippe, a trained and skilled watchmaker, teaches his son the elements on which a sound professional education is based. After completion of his apprenticeship, Philippe asks his father for permission to embark on a Tour de France to improve his occupational outlook. Aged 18 and a half, Philippe leaves his family. Nothing is known about the duration and stations of Philippe's journeyman years, except that he never arrives at Besançon, his original destination, and instead stays in Le Havre for three years. Destiny lures Philippe abroad for the first time in 1836. He accepts a job in London. Endowed with experience, Philippe returns to France in 1839 and settles in Versailles together with a young Swiss with whom he had previously worked in London. The demand for high quality timepieces is disappointing. Sluggish business encourages Philippe's quest for a truly innovative idea. A royal court watchmaker suggests it would be good to develop a watch without a winding key. That would be a ray of hope. Philippe starts working on the project right away and soon invents a simple and reliable mechanism for which he submits a patent application. In 1844, he presents his winding system at the Paris Industrial Exposition, but it doesn't achieve the breakthrough he had hoped for. In 1863, he publishes his main treatise, Watches with Keyless Works. In 1839, Patek partners with watchmaker Francois Chapek for six years. Apparently, this joint venture doesn't fulfill Patek's ambitious expectations. His encounter with Philippe coincides with the point in time when the partnership is to be renewed or terminated. In 1844, Patek aims to recruit a good watchmaker. He travels to Paris and learns about Philippe's invention at the French Industrial Exposition. Patek invites Philippe to Geneva as a replacement for Chapek. This is the letter that Philippe receives in Paris on April the 9th, 1845. Monsieur, you no doubt received my letter yesterday. Until my previous partner has coped with his new situation, he should be convinced that I am associating myself with one of the most venerable and respected establishments in Paris. No one in Geneva should know who you are. So, for the coachman, 
you are Monsieur Adrien. Disembark at the gates of Geneva and enter the city through the main gate or across the small suspension bridge. Do not pretend to be a voyager. Go directly to Madame Patek, Quai de Berg, number 15, on the first floor, and announce yourself as Monsieur Adrien. Until then, stay in good health, come quickly. I shake your hand. Signed, Patek. Geneva is frequented by many Polish and Russian families that find appeal in Patek's affable and agreeable manners. Philippe is in charge of provisioning the watches that have been ordered, the completion of all watches in the production phase, the creation of new timepiece types, and the pursuit of his invention, the keyless winding works. Philippe had always dreamt of participating in the establishment of a manufacturing operation based on the principle of identical parts and assembly in batches using techniques he had learned in Paris. Patek quickly realizes that the survival of the company depended on his international clientele. Business trips are instrumental in consolidating the reputation of a watch manufacturer. In 1851, Patek and Philippe go to London separately to attend the great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations. At the event, Queen Victoria purchases two watches, one for herself and one for Albert. At that time, traveling was risky and uncomfortable. The tribulations of travel are beginning. I should be in London already, but have heard that the vessel was requisitioned by the British government. Instead of 10 days, we were en route for 14 days, and the weather was terrible. I suffered. For the first time in years, I was starving because we were held up in the midst of a forest by the derailed locomotive of an oncoming train. This trip would enable him to increase the number of commissions. He returns home with a reassuring order from Tiffany for 130 watches. Patek arrives in Geneva, afflicted with rheumatism in all extremities.
If you want to preserve your independence, that means you also have to have a fantastic product. And to have a fantastic product, you have to control the quality who goes inside. And to do that, you have to do it yourself. We have been evolving in terms of quantity, in terms of complexity with the watches, and uh, we needed more space, we needed more tools, more people, more machine. So this is why we decided at one point in 2013 really to think about the future of Patek Philippe by having a new building. You know, at the time, I think it was still the vision of my dad. He's the, the most, uh, I would say, professional one. He has also the, 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 the knowledge about all the past, but also the vision of the future. I was also there, of course, for helping him and thinking about the future, because this will be my future at one point. The idea was to have everything under one roof in one place. So Plan Les Watt is our headquarter. So it was quite logical for us also to be still in Plan Les Watt with the new building. How can this building help us really to produce something from A to Z without any trouble? How can we make a watch in a perfect way? We tried really to accommodate the way how we produce the watches. It has to be logical, it had to be smart and efficient. So if you look at all the building, you will see that every floor has a different task. And really that was very interesting because you had to planify and organize all of that way before the building was done. All the, for example, all the, the electrical part or all the elevator are on the side. And in the middle, you have this huge floor for 1,600 square meter. We have five floor like that. So that's really very big when you think about it. The way how we did it is that every floor can be used differently. It looks very strict, but it's also on the other side very supple. We can move whatever we like at any time. That's very important because you do not know how you're going to work in the future.
And yes, it takes years, it takes a lot of investment, but also it takes a lot of listening about your own staff. They are the one who are working daily with this building. They are the one who have, they had to tell us, okay, what, what do we have to improve, you know? What, what is your dream building? The biggest fear at the beginning was uh, the size of the building, but it, it quickly became one of his assets. You know, most of the people today are very happy with it. I mean, the ones who are maybe less happy are the ones who have to walk the whole building because they have a, about 190 meters to walk from one side to the other one. And yes, it takes some time, some, but on the other side, you know, it's a luxury that we can have at Paddock is to really prepare the future with this type of building and make everybody happy. You know, those people have been working for many years with Paddock. Some of them have been moving for five or seven times already. And it is the first time that I can hear that most people have been really happy to move here because in terms of, um, I would say, um, accommodation, in terms of work, it's a very quiet building because we have a lot of tooling, a lot of machinery, heavy one who are making a lot of noises. And uh, we really try to find the best way how to, I would say, um, uh, diminish the sound through certain walls, through the ceiling, but really uh, study very carefully to really anticipate those type of uh, heavy, heavy sound. When you have so many machines uh, doing little parts, they, they turn very quickly and vibration is uh, always there. And this can be really damageable for, for the parts, you know, if the, the, if the ground is vibrating, you know, you cannot work. Here, we have been really working on the lightning. Light is very important. People who have been really working uh, with Paddock for many years, when they arrived here in this building, that was really one of their first comment, was to say, well, you know, the light that we have is really fantastic. That allows us really to work much more properly, to, to be much more efficient. We can see every detail. And God knows that Paddock Philippe really are focusing on details. We very often talk only about watchmaker, but there are more than 50 different type of work at Paddock. So if I wanted to increase really the quantity, first I would have to train those people to find them, and that's not easy at all. And secondly, I will have also to think very carefully not to become too big so that the quality may go down because it's much more difficult to control. And maybe also the, I would say, the passion for Patek Philippe, you know, the more you will produce, the more people will own the watch. And I do not know really where is the limit for Patek. I think rarity is part also of our success. With this building, we have uh, many different uh, tasks. That's the beauty about it. It goes from R&D, for example, who is very, very sophisticated, using computer and really uh, looking for the future, till the division called art, where we do engraving, enameling, uh, marquetry. And this is also very important. So they are not using heavy machine. They are not using new technology but they're using really know-how from the past. And to do that, I think it's very important for Paddock that you need to train also the future uh, young generation. And here at Paddock, we, we have a really a long history with all those beautiful art pieces. Enamel was always a passion in my family, for example. But today, enameling, there is no school anymore. And this is something that I really pushed because I know that in the future, if I'm willing to keep those beautiful objects, I'm gonna to need to teach the younger generation how to do them. And that was the only way really for Paddock. We say, well, we need a floor with teacher because we are lucky to have them. Those teachers are the one making the pieces from today and they will be the teacher for the new generation. Of course, as a family business, you have to think about the next generation. On the other side, you also have to be vigilant, you know? It's very dangerous also to push uh, the, the, the kids if they are too young. So yes, I'm thinking about the future for Padek Philippe. I hope it will be also with my kids, but